Hello and welcome back to game number two of Cloud9 versus LFY. You're watching the International 7 or 2017, if you will. Group B. And uh, LFY is undefeated still. Cloud9 uh, won the f or lost the first game and they're looking to get an extra point on board because they need them. And they are 1 <laughs> and 6 right now. They're looking to lose again. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sitting around here with Sindarin. And uh, yeah, we're going to see if Cloud9 can, can change their fate. It's not going to be easy though. LFY has shown that they are arguably one of the strongest, if not the strongest team so far. Yeah, they're 9 0. And. Going 9-0, maybe they haven't played all of the strongest teams just yet in their group, but they've played True. some, and they have looked so good. And the last game was no exception. Like, this is this is a team that I would be shocked if... It's already guaranteed top four, I think. The winner record should be secured with nine wins, right? They could get... What's the worst score they can get? Well, you're playing... Uh, you have nine teams in a group, eight opponents, 16 games. So, so they could get 9-7. So they could get 9-7. If they lose out now. Yes. Which I think would still be enough for fourth, but I don't think that's the score they're going to get. Um, so this is a team we will be seeing in the winner bracket, well deserved, yeah. uh, more or less. I, I will I'll almost guarantee that now that we will be seeing them in the winner bracket. It's something really. I mean, statistically, it's probably still possible for them to to just yeah. miss out, but realistically speaking, you know, okay. they're good enough. Cloud9, yeah. however, they they're. I, they're not fighting for their lives, but they need to find some momentum and they need to get some wins. Because at this current point, they could actually end bottom of their group and then yeah. they're out. Yeah. And this is a team that, you know, all the teams going to this tournament are obviously have high hopes and uh, are, are hoping to go far. And maybe a lot of them are expecting to place at least top whatever. Uh, but the absolute thing that everyone wants to avoid as a bare minimum is to not get to play on stage. Uh, yeah. You really want to avoid that. So every win counts a lot. Uh, the bottom of the group right now, I think, is like one five, one five, one six, or something like yep. that. So Hellraisers and DC are the other two teams yeah. uh, with Cloud9. They're in the same same boat. So just a couple of wins can can bring can take you far. As long as you get to the main event, then you're playing like these deadly best of ones. But at least you have a chance to fight for uh, for placements. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, if you don't make that, then you know, the, it wasn't your tournament. Uh, it looks like it could be LFY's tournament this time, or at least they will go far. Uh, so Cloud9, similar opening. Actually, the same one as last time. Yeah. Same King Silencer. Uh, different draft order, though. The first pick this time was with LFY, who took the Earth Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then their Death Prophet again. So. What do you make of the Arc Warden ban? I don't actually know what uh, what LFY are doing with their bans this game. The Bounty Hunter and the Arc Warden ban stand out as pretty strange. Um, this can either be because they have some intel on a specific Cloud9 strategy that they're expecting they would run, or that they're trying to um, plant a seed for later in the tournament, trying to be a bit less predictable with their ban patterns or something like that to, to mislead future opponents, feeling very confident could be the case. So you're, so you're saying they might be feeling confident enough to take the second game off of Cloud9 and therefore not playing as crisp as they otherwise would. I mean, I think they're going to play really well. That's not the... And the, and they're picking comfort picks already with Earth Spirit and Death yeah. Prophet. But maybe they just, you know, they're they're mixing things up a bit in the bands maybe to get to play against some different heroes. I think they're very confident that they're going to win this game. I think they have the reason to be. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't mean you get overconfident and cocky and just start picking bad heroes and giving away really good heroes. As long as their lineup makes sense in their optic and it's yeah. good against the opponent... I think they're the clear favorites, and that to do that, you can ban a lot of different things and still have a, a good lineup for yourself. There's the Drow ban, however. That's a ban they did the last game as well, so this makes sense to me that they get rid of that. I cannot explain you why they're banning the, the Arc Warden. I don't know. Well, Bounty Hunter was, was played by AOI earlier this tournament already, but uh, mm -hmm. this is also the first time that there's an Earth Spirit on the side of LFY. They could be banning the Arc because it's good against Earth mid. But I, Arc Warden has played safe lane, I think, in, in pro games. I was just thinking, like, what is the reason? What have LFY done differently in this game that would make them want to ban an Arc Warden that I think Cloud9 hasn't even played? Yeah. Um, and the only thing that comes to mind is if it were to be a mid-Arc, then maybe that's annoying for Earth Spirit because if he rolls in, he can get slowed up and counter-killed. But there's so many heroes for that. that uh, I, 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 I just fly out don't know. All right. Here's we Alina. That's a hero Fata has played. Come for hero for him. Previously. Uh, could also technically be a support Lena together with the support Sanking, and then the silencer could be a core. So, still options available for Cloud9 in that regard. I guess so. I just think, but yeah, Fada will probably play Lena though. Like most likely. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's nice when you open your draft like this that you have the option to swap if necessary. 
if they let's say this Lena core gets ultra counterpicked, then they have options to move it around if they think that's a better choice. Um, a hero that I think could be very interesting for LFY in this game would be Oracle. I don't know if they've played it yet, um, but would be a nice pickup. The only problem he has is sound. They did. They did. Yeah, they uh, they played it all uh, twice. Okay, it's a good hero for DDC's playstyle. I think he's a great type of player to play Oracle on. He's very good at positioning and playing defensive supports. His Dazzle is very yeah, superb. Uh, very known and um, proven. And the reason I like Oracle in this game is that you could double the heals of Death Prophet. You can uh, put Fate's Edict on this hero. It's very powerful because Death Prophet has so little power in her right clicks and all of her true strength lies in her spell casting. And then, yeah, the Fate's Edict counters out the damage from Lina and Sand King very well. They're going to go for the alternative, though. So there is going to be the DDC Dazzle, uh, which is also totally fine. Uh, similar logic, you keep Death Prophet safe and sound with the Grave, and then she gets to get her Soul Siphon, her Spirit Siphons off, and and heal back up, and you give her a lot of armor with them. So, yeah, great just combination. Yeah, be careful about the, the silence. Yes, the global silence is going to be very important this game for Cloud. Hey, it's an Enchantress! Change of pace here for Cloud9. Yeah! I wonder if this is going to be offlane or support. I kind of hope in this game that it's support, just because of how good it is against the Earth Spirit and Dazzle. Isn't it one of MSS's signature heroes used to be? Uh, it has been, at least. He's played it before, <clears> I'm sure. Uh, the, what I like about Enchantress is, if you play it offlane, it's very good if the core matchup is good. If Ench is against a hero that can't hit her, mm -hmm. then she's just going to win the lane on her own if it's a one-on-one. -on -one. And what I like about the support Ench is, if both of the supports are bad at killing the creeps or controlling them, like say you have no Crystal Maiden or no Doom or no Witch Doctor Cask or something like that, a support Ench can destroy the map. We saw it earlier today in one of the games with, I believe... Who was playing Enchantress earlier in the game I cast? Let me just quickly check that. I think it was uh, Zai from EG that played right. against Empire, and they were destroying the lanes with this Enchantress early on. Um, I think it's a very powerful pick in that sense for Cloud9. I really like it, just theoretically, this this choice of hero. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just see how they how they place it in their strategy. Because the support duo for LFY is, is already clear. You got an Earth exactly. Spirit and a Dazzle. They will not play other roles. Technically, you can put Earth Spirit off lane, but I yeah. really don't think they're going to do that. I yeah. also don't think it's an inflame hero. No. Um, they're taking a lot of time here. I think they're a bit uh, intimidated by the idea of this uh, Enchantress. Uh, core Monkey King? Yep. That looks to be the case. All right, here Would we go. Would that be an off lane or a safe lane? I don't know why, like... Because it can be either, right? It can be, yeah. Which one do you like better? Because it is both not really done that often. It's I both unusual. I don't like the Monkey King being a lone top, I think. Okay. He shouldn't be solo or bottom, that is, they're dire. I don't think he should be solo offlane in this game. So either they can play him with help from Dazzle or from Earth Spirit, or they try to play him in the safe lane position. Uh, As we've seen, though, LFY really likes that their support can rotate, so leaving their cores alone. It's something yeah. that they very frequently do. If they want to do that, I think they should put the Monkey King safe lane. He has a lot of good matchups in the safe lane. Uh, I don't think he wins against Enchantress, though. That, In theory, for me, that is a very Enchantress favored matchup. Monkey King is all about right clicks, and he can't get them in. So yeah. it's a rather strange pick for me, this uh, oh. Monkey King. Lifesteal and Anti-Mage bans coming out, and that is the last pick here for LFY. Should reveal what their plans are for Monkey King. I, I have no clue what direction they're going with this draft now. This Monkey King pick is very, very different. From and out of the nine games they've played so far, Monkey King has not been picked. So no. this is the, the first showing of that. Yep. And it will be a clockwork. clockwork. All right. So, so that's a safe lane Monkey. More or less guaranteed safe lane Monkey King here for Monet. Interesting. Uh, I think the hero has a place as a core, um, but it's very important for Monkey King as a core to get farm. That's why I'm not that big a fan of the offlane role for the hero, because... If you fall behind, um, your contribution to the fight is the same as that of a support Monkey King, basically. Um, getting fast levels on this hero can be nice, but in this game, the matchups it has aren't good enough to warrant putting it off lane and hoping to to get a core impact from that. Phantom Lancer last pick. So if you're LFY, you're going to get ganks with Monet, well, Monkey King, and then if that's successful, then you push the tower with super. Right, uh, that's a little bit the uh, like what like the 
game plan around this? Uh, the, the logic is definitely that the Clockwork, Earth Spirit, and Monkey King can combine and find kills pretty easily. And then, because of the synergy these heroes have in pairs, they can do the similar thing to the last game, where there's like a gank squad and a push squad at the same time. That might be what they're looking to do here. Uh, but... Maybe... So, how's this lane gonna go? It is indeed an AUI Enchantress, by the way, so yes. this will be an MSS offlane sanking. That sanking looks huge in this perspective, by the way. It's like very <laughs> yeah, it's fearsome. Uh, I think this is a Monkey King favored lane, which is very rare, because Sand King wins against almost every melee hero, but Monkey King is so strong in melee matchups as well. So, that could be something they were expecting when they saw the picks that MSS would be playing that Sand King, and could be part of the reasoning for the Monkey King pickup here. Uh, it's a pretty good PL game, though. And similar to last game, I, I don't think Cloud9's draft necessarily has problems later on if things mm -hmm. go well. They just need to get off to a better start. It's simply, they, they can't have these like this deficit of 15 minutes again. So, pressure on AY. Uh, pressure on AY in a, in a sense, but I think this time, in a way, maybe also a bit pressure off, because they can just play standings and, okay. and uh, take it a bit easier, maybe. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay, predictions are in. Team right. with most Roshan kills, I think LFY are going to win the game and that they're the stronger team, so I think they're also going to get Roche. Mm -hmm. Last player to be killed, that is the player who dies last, not in the game, but the first yes. player to get, or last player to get his first death of the game. Yes. I think the Death Prophet will possibly not even die this game. That could happen. But he man. is going to be a target that's going to get ganked. Don't he is. Yeah, it's actually pretty d difficult to pick this. Monkey? Uh, no, he's very I'm, squishy. Uh, it's it's Kara Monkey King. I, I'm I'm okay. Let's do Monkey King. That sounds cool. First blood, zero to three minutes. I'm down with that. I think when there's an enchantress in the game like this and an Earth Spirit, there's gonna be a quick kill. Yeah. Team with first barracks, LFY. We're gonna yeah. go with them as well. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how Let's much we get. As well. So in flame gets scouted out. I really like AUI's enchantress, by the way. Never mind. Wait a second. Hold that thought. Roly Boly in from AFU, they find themselves a turn he can double ganger to the other side of the trees though, and he should be okay. Whoa, what is Inflame doing here? <laughs> I'm not sure if maybe he misclicked on the map uh, or something, because that was a cl that was a mistake. That was a nice. bad play. First blood did indeed happen zero to three minutes. Yes, good time <laughs> prediction, right? And Envy gets the kill for that as well, so great start for him. And that was uh, a bit of a giveaway perhaps, but Wow, hey. you can still predict it, guys. If you didn't check that, you can still predict 0 to 3. <laughs> the predictions end now, so that's your free uh, point of the game. Free <laughs> points. <laughs> nice one. Uh, that's funny. I, I don't. I honestly, I have no idea what happened to uh, Inflame there. He just kept running in. Yeah. Not sure what he was expecting there. But oh. nice first blood for Cloud9, as yeah. you said. And it went the way of Envy, so good head start for him. He's going against Poor Man, and probably worked toward a fast ring of Aquila, I would imagine, for this type of lane. Oh, what do you make of this sentry? Is it blocking things? It's blocking the the south oh. camp, not the north yeah. one. And AUI gets a centaur, which is pretty decent. Oh, that's very good, actually. And he might he might smoke straight away and try to make a play top with the sand king here. Yeah, he's got it in his infantry already. Uh, AUI, of course, uh, used to be known for his gen. Yep. And uh, Enchantress is alive. Very good gen. He finds himself another spirit, though. Can't really rotate from mid right now, at least not as a surprise. And we have also got a Dazzle coming to help Afu, who is able to roll back in to the help of DDC. AI is just fine in terms of health, though. He's not in any danger uh, just yet. Forcing two heroes to come his way is actually very nice for the Sand King. Uh, this gave a lot of space to MSS, and because of that, he's getting a little bit of a level and uh, pressure advantage here in the lane. If Enchantress comes in from the right now, they could get a very good uh, opportunity top. But instead, he's going to go mid with at least this Wildwing Ripper. It's going to be annoying for a super. And this early stage just already looks a lot smoother for Cloud9. Yeah, they have a solid plan about how they want to how they want to handle this. Yeah. And it's working out. So far, so good. And Inflame is getting pressured a lot as well, bot lane. They're winning all three lanes right now. Very nicely. Fata is actually destroying mid currently. He is forcing DP to use her salve. He's up 12-4 and 4 to 3-0 and 0 and is holding the middle lane in the river. So this is very, very different from the previous game for Super. Top lane, Enchantress going in. Yeah, there's a stun available, but uh, you can't really get a range of DDC. It's too speedy for him. You gotta get that angle right. Medium Clockwork gets forced back behind the tower as well, as uh, we have also got 
AY pressuring Afu. AY is putting in a lot of work. He is still level one, but he's already been helping out mid. That tornado was massive. Helping out top, making sure that uh, he gets chased down. Oh, Pi might be in trouble here. He wanted to deny the rune, but Clockwork has 20 more babes move speed. Oh, that's a kill for Inflame indeed. Battery Salt ready in the meantime on the top lane as well. They go in, they want to go for AY. Oh, that heal did so much damage by DDC. MSS does not have a Burrow Strike unless he eats the mango, which he might be forced to do. Nope. Doesn't get, uh, get the chance for that. Double kill for top lane. For Monet, actually. So that's the core right there. And uh, all of a sudden, three kills on the board for LFY across the board, across the map. Yeah, they're using this heal bomb very nicely with the two melee cores running in close. And this is, uh, this is something... It's easy to say afterwards, but this really shouldn't be happening for Cloud9 when they're playing this Enchantress Sand King lane. If they position themselves correctly and bring in the two Enchantress creeps first, this moment of opportunity doesn't exist. Uh, but done is done. It's a couple of nice kills for LFY. And oh, Pilot Eye is going to get eyes on Afu here. They're just going to force each other away, it looks like. Yeah. That's not really how it works. Pi is going to force him away. So they were just running in opposite directions. That's pretty strange. Don't say stuff like that, Shearer. Hi, it was, wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is something we've seen a lot more in this tournament, actually. Soul Ring, uh, just as an item in general, it's getting a lot more love. This time it's going to be the Phantom Lancer of Envy picking it up. I, oh, yeah. It's been so many pickups of this Soul Ring from various roles in the game compared to the past. So, a lot of cores. Yep. So I guess it is a, oh, roll in. He misses the roll. He could kick Fata into the tower, yeah, though. Oh, he gets a stun off. There's still also a clockwork, though, and Fata. He's just trying to get some damage done on Super here. And he gets the kill before he dies as well. Good on him. AUI getting chased down. Can they chase him down far enough? Nah, there's a heal coming out. And he should be okay. But, I mean, that's worth it for Fata. A lot of rotations. Gets the kill before he dies. Yeah, good timing from AUI to come in from the right at that exact moment. Both teams had the same idea to target mid. Yeah, and that's uh, still being targeted, by the way, at least by LFY. They got Clockwork oh, once again out. rotating in. I believe they know he's there. They saw him walking they with do that know ward. For sure. And Pai doesn't care. No, it doesn't right. care. This is really aggressive from LFY. They're ta basically tower diving here. Yeah, Afu is already out. He doesn't want to be there anymore. Clockwork stuck on the cogs. Light Striker Ray clips him as well. And there's no way out. This is a uh, uh, mistake again. This is straight disrespect, Sheever. Yeah, they, they are a little bit cocky here. and it's, they, uh, don't, they don't care for Cloud9. Well, they should, because they're getting punished for it. Yep, they are. C9 have some uh, much better movement patterns here. And their their farm is also looking very good. Yep. Both the PL and the Lina are having good starts. Enchantress is having a good impact with the movements. And this looks to be a completely different game already at this rate. Yeah. LFY's lineup will not be as, as dominant as the last one. Well, Nick, what do you think? Uh, like Enchantress obviously has been rotating around a lot. At what point should she focus on herself? Because she, uh, she just got level 3. A little bit behind there on the on the levels, I feel like, from where she could be, obviously. She, she could have a bit more, but I think as long as she's at least on par with the opposing team's supports and is making comparable moves, then it's fine. Um, for now, she's level 3, almost 4, and so are the supports on the dire side, yeah. so that's okay. I think looking for a bit, uh, a couple of extra plays, especially around the mid area, would be very nice. And then, yeah, after that, probably take a little bit of time in the jungle on her own. Oh, you gotta be careful. Roll, Roll missed again. Oh, that's a double damage rune. Yeah, it's being protected. Pilot and I will guard it for Fata, but Afu, we just want to get it. Oh! He forces the double damage rune for Pilot and I. He pays for that. He didn't get stunned, though. But he still dies. I mean, that. Uh, do, yeah. do you think. That was risky. How much. If you went to the store yes. and you could buy a double damage rune, how yes. much intelligence would you pay for it? <laughs> what would you consider a bargain? Well, that was. I think two minus two is market price. Pretty good. And it's gonna cost them a tower as well. So yeah. this th definitely not worth it for the Earth Spirit to make no. that move. Can they still fight afterwards? I th th this tower's gone. For yeah. sure. There's no way. Siege okay. creep is there. It's gonna get lanced, forced away. And last it goes to enemy. So Nice more gold yeah. for him. This is a really different game. Like Cloud9 are they have the they have the lineup and they have the start that they need to be able to contest LFY. And yep. this would be such a big win for them if they can keep this up, keep this pace up. This is the kind of win that can really propel you into the tournament after yep. you had a rough start. Beating the, the first place in the group like would mentally. be really big. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big... 
it's a big thing to win a game like this. We're, let's not get ahead of ourselves, though. It's not <laughs> it's just seven, seven minutes, minutes in, <laughs> but I have reason to be a little bit excited for Cloud9 because this looks... This looks good. This looks like a better Cloud9 that I've seen in the previous games I've cast, and I've cast three of their games so far. And this, uh, this is definitely a smoother start with, with better teamwork and rotations. So looks like they're, they're learning from their mistakes and improving as a team. Always good to see. Yeah, with all the rotations on bot lane, uh, MSS has been struggling a little bit. He's yeah. level four at the moment. He does have the wave pushing into his tower, though, so that will help him uh, help him out a bit, for sure. We have got Afu sitting bottom, waiting for the right opportunity. He has got Clockwork, but Clockwork is still level five. I think he wants to have Clockwork level six before he does anything. Even then, it can be dangerous. They they have no kill potential on the on the Phantom Lancer. Oh, actually, they're just going to oh, go. Oh yeah, he's going to teleport out. That's yeah. the only way to do that. He knew he was going to be not in a happy place. Uh, nice read here from Fata as well. He was going toward the Arcane Rune bottom, but he saw that the Earth Spirit was coming in, and then he didn't even try to contest, because Earth Spirit and DP were going to connect together mm -hmm. and get that kill, more than likely. No, I mean, at this point, they were they already ahead. They know they are ahead, so they can just focus on getting a bit more out of the map at this point. So they get some farm on the Enchantress. You see AY just mostly focusing on the jungle, perhaps soon rotating again out of these level four and a half. Get MSS focusing a bit more with this uh, the waves pushing in, so they can they can just they can just relax, they can chill. Yep. There's no pressure. Pressure is a little bit on uh, on LFY and perhaps um, more specifically on Afu, who is gonna uh, well he's still pressuring bottom. He wants to pressure bottom, but he's trying to maybe soak some experience. Uh, he's got to get out of there now. Let's go to the store, do some shop. Didn't really mention before this game started, but in my mind. This guy is a top three player in the world on this hero. I, Afu on the Earth some Spirit? of the plays I've seen from this guy on this hero is absolutely incredible. Right, if you say top three, then the other two are what? Boka and Jerex? Jerex is definitely legacy-wise. I, I don't know right now if he's as good at, as this guy. This guy might be the best player in the hero right now, but right. you know when you when you talk about it, just historically, Jerex is definitely has to be mentioned on that. Yeah. And I'm not sure who the third guy would be. And he rotated for Super. Super gets graved up for the moment. Is there a heal available though? I think he's still gone for tries to do what he can, but he didn't even get the siphon off anymore. The rest of his team is helping out though. They managed to take down Fada. Can they get more? Is the question. They back off. Afu, he is not able to back off. He's got a fairy fire and a couple of stick charges, and he is not using them at all, so he oh. is... Uh, ah, he would have died anyway. This yeah. stick plus lance from Envy actually available. But, all right, two for, for one. Two. Yeah. Another successful move from Cloud9. They lost a little bit of gold advantage, though, over the last little bit of time here, and I think it's mainly just the top lane where Monet is gaining so much on the sand. Yeah, at what point are we going to see Monkey actually do Monkey things? I don't know. He's currently buying Battle Fury. Don't do this in your pubs if oh, you're in my team, please. Oh, please. They're just going to give Odie picks what he wants. He buys Battle Fury in every melee hero he plays. Yeah, I've seen his first Oi. I should have closed the stream when he played that. But I didn't. There's something, something magical about that. Something special you don't see every day. I mean, I guess special is a word for it. Yeah. <laughs> So what do we think about a Battle Fury Monkey King? I don't. I I can't really judge because I I really don't know how this hero is played in the safe lane most of the time. Uh, it's it's very uncharacteristic in competitive games. So uh, I'm I'm not sure. I think he's getting it mainly because of the Phantom Lancer to like safeguard against him later and keep the farm up so they surely can scale as well. Oh, MSS is in trouble here. Yeah, he gets the sun up, the sign there as well as Afu. He can roll in if he wants to, but he is gonna let him go. He can just stone kick him. Here. Kick him. Yeah, that he works as well. It. But meanwhile, the tower fell. AUI took advantage of that little bit of space that MSS gave him to get that tower. And at the same time, the exorcism mid did not bear too much fruit. They got about half. But uh, Cloud9 still looking very good and looking poised yeah. to go mid with this exorcism down. Yeah, they've been pressuring this, uh, this mid tower for a little while now. It is costing NB perhaps a little bit of farm sticking around here like that. Having a bit of a standoff. Yep. You think it's worth it? If they get the tower only, worth it. Or Yeah, I, I think having the PL and the Lena in the lane together right now, as much as they are, is is not the right play. I would like to see the Lancer just play either a bit more in his jungle or around the top area, which should be the safest play now. Yeah. Uh, with that top tower gone, if they can get a ward into the dire jungle, that would be a, a pretty safe area for him to play in. Uh, it looks like it's going to be the other way around, though. They're going to move Fata instead. 
and maybe find a try to find a pick on the Monkey King here. He's currently standing in a tree, though. He does not see them, I think. Correct. So this ward will be planted successfully. Did they see him jump? No. No, I don't think so. Well, he's on his way middle. But he's spending a lot of time just hopping around here. He wants to go for Envy. Yep. Oh, Envy's actually going to run into him here. Uh, the stun comes in, he jumps forward, he has got the clockwork there as well with the battery assault, the silence is on, and there is no way to hide. Beautiful kill. Very nice. Taking advantage of Envy using the doppelganger previously. Uh, they they know his, uh, or well, I, either they know or they're guessing that he has the skill build that he does, but this is a level 1 doppelganger, so it's really long cooldown. Mm -hmm. If that was level 4, he wouldn't have died, he would have had it again. But he went for the 413 build, which is, I think, pretty unorthodox right now. They're diving uh, pretty fast, or they, they hope that they can dive pretty fast, let's put it that way, while the tower gets taken down. But it doesn't look like Cloud9 is actively defending this. Nope. MSS has been, uh, has been quite silent as well. He almost got his blink dagger. That will uh, cause some ripples, hopefully, for Cloud9. Get some, yep. uh, some tempo going. Yeah, tempo is a good word for what they need right now. I feel like they're slowing themselves down Oops. a little bit too much. Oh. Hookshot on the Enchantress, but that's that's a tricky hero to get there as a clockwork. He has got some help though. Super is there with the Siphon as well. He's got the magical damage going. The global silence comes out to try and defend anyway. Why it is successful also with the stun there from Fata. But that was a defensive global. Yep. That's a that's a that's a costly one. Uh we'll see. Uh the exorcism was used as well, so True. arguably there's a trade off there that uh LFY can't push a tower with this one. And those two abilities more or less overlap in cooldown. Actually, Global's going to be ready before. So, might be a little moment of opportunity. Envy finds the Invis Rune. Just going to lance down here. Oh, they're actually going for it. Fata will get the kill, though. Woo! Yeah, he did place the sentry. <laughs> Earth Spirit is on Ench. We'll kill him here. Ooh, yeah, there is no way out for a Y. Nice stun. Doesn't save Phantom Lancer anymore though, and Super chases forward for Fada. He's got a shrine to help him out. In the meantime, the Stand King has got his Burrow Strike up, goes for the Monkey King. Monkey King already uses ultimate. He's got to stay in there. He's able to stay in there, but uh, that Sand King was able to kill off the Clockwork. Super looking for more pilot die is very far away though. Teleport in Dazzle. Nah, he's not gonna go for that. He might have actually reached him if he tried. I think so, but he did. I don't think he he realized he was that close. Overall, though, that cha that exchange was favorable for the fly. Yep. Got a one extra kill and a lot of gold in the Earth Spirit, which is always nice. This hero actually benefits a lot from uh, from money, similar to... Uh, in some ways, the hero is so is similar to Sand King and Earthshaker and how it wants to play. You want to get either a utility item or a blink dagger, and then you want to just try to initiate and set up for your team, or wait until the fight gets put in a position where you can get a really big AoE combo. So. Uh, I was expecting to see Blink Dagger from him, but it looks like he's building toward a Yule first. Already committing now for the Void Stone, so will not be a Blink first item for Afu. Uh, Yule obviously has its merits when you're against Silencer. Nice way to get yep. rid of that global or keep yourself alive. Can counter the Sand King combo as well if he sees him. Can maybe catch off the PL. If you Yule the PL, you set up a very easy silence for yourself if you're fast enough and have good timing. Uh, there's always plays with your scepter. It's a good item, in general. It looks like Light Nine wants to uh, invade enemy territory. Oh, that lane. is a clockwork in trouble. A lot of trouble. There's no way for Inflame to get out of that one, and the rest of his team is not anywhere near enough to make a counterplay here. We have Afu still pushing on the bot lane, perhaps feeling a little bit more safe to take the tower. Put some pressure in. There's. Uh, Four people behind this tower, and even Fata is still fairly close by. He does now teleport bottom to defend that tower. He might be able to kill him if he lands all his spells here. Uh, let's see, he gets a stun off. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, but. See ya. Easy. That was, uh. That's that actually, that's gonna be his bloodstone. He has it in 200. Nice. Pressure top. Unless stops. Monkey King kills him on the way out, though. Oh, the stun misses. Fada in trouble. Global silence coming out. He got the, he got the life steal there though. But he needs to attack. He gets the kill. MSS gets the epicenter off. He's in a lot of trouble though. Monet, can he get that going there? He's still alive for the moment. He gets some life steal back, and he kills off that Sand King. I always am, am so amazed that a Monkey King can live through that. 
<laughs> he was so low for the longest time, and it looks like his health doesn't even die. He basically life stole the same amount as he took. Jingo Master is a pretty good ability. Pretty, pretty, pretty strong. In the meantime, on the top lane, AY is getting chased down. There's a Death Prophet with his ultimate on, and that was uh, the death. Oh, it looks like charges. LFY are starting to do LFY things now with this this spread on the map again. Like Monet is down here, reads the movement of the Lena, kills and him look, off alone. There's a pile of die stuck in cogs with Inflame. Exactly where Inflame wants him. Flare there, a couple of hits needed, and that's a dead silencer. That means across the map, everybody died apart from Envy in the last minute or so. Yeah. They're just It's just very coordinated, the way they're moving around. And this Monkey King play as well was really nice. Like, he jumped on the tree, Fata saw him, and him, then he jumped down before the stun came off on the tree, kills Fata, and then the Clockwork connected, and they got the secondary kill on the Sand King. And then clock straight onto the next play, straight onto the next play again. Just very, very efficient. And they're still keeping up on the farm while doing this. Yeah. They caught up. Uh, the Cloud9 was a bit ahead at some point. Yeah, but this monkey is so rich. Wow. It's really far ahead. With the Battle Fury. Yep. I'm amazed. Do not try this at home. Exactly. I was thinking this. <laughs> Don't. Like, this with is not all, be with all due respect to our dear viewers, you cannot play like this. <laughs> you cannot do this. <laughs> Oh, don't do that to your pubs. <laughs> don't do that uh, to my this, pubs. This, re <laughs> this requires a particular skill set yes. to be able to play like this. It's and a, a very impressive scenario so far. as well, because he does build it, as you said, probably to deal with the Phantom Lancer, to be able to, just in case Cloud9 does make it to late game, they want to have something to deal with those illusions. You gotta uh, be prepared for everything. The weakness of this uh, Battle Fury build up is compared to other Monkey King builds, like sometimes you would have a bit more tankiness early on. Oh, wait a second, mid lane? Yeah, That's a dead Ultra. enemy. I There's think. Global Silence comes out to try and help him. His double ganger oh, is so up, close. but he doesn't get it off. Nice barrel strike. Epicenter, though, up on two. Clockwork, as well as DDC's Dazzle. Go down. Phantom Lancer. Oh, you got uh, you got two in return. Nice counterplay, and they get the tower as well. Yeah. It's, uh, it's actually slightly worth it, especially with the tower helping out. You don't see that in the gold change, but it does make a difference. So what I was getting at with this Monkey King build, just to quickly like try to summarize what yeah. makes this uh, difficult to play, is that uh, Monkey King as a hero depends so much on getting the Jingu Mastery stacks up. That's what makes the hero strong in fights, is that you get those stack stacks running. And in order to enable that, you would often see Monkey Kings go for fairly stat-heavy builds, something like Sanjin Yasha as a core or a Vanguard, uh, that type of build, so you can get Jingu up. When you go for Battle Fury, you're margin for error in fights is very small because if you get caught out you have almost nothing defensively to fend for yourself so he needs to play very very cleanly oh, in the fights he's done fun. so far he already used his stun he's silenced up now as well he's trying to make it out to safety he's got some help from his teammates envy highlight die ay oh, they're all there but they're all not able to save him does end up dropping clockwork's flare yep that's killed a, off by the flare and there goes a, the tower that's a sad way to go Another very quick and aggressive play from LFY, diving in between the towers there and finding the Lina. I'm gonna grab that tower as well. And now, the thing is, if Monkey King is in this position and he gets this build and it's going this well, he's actually gonna get so farmed this game. Monkey King has uh, really good damage, so this Battle Fury is gonna very quickly clean up waves. He can wave clear so quickly because he, in addition to having this Battle Fury, he has two AoE abilities. Both the Primal Spring and the Boundless Strike will be able to clear out waves and camps quickly, so uh, we'll see Monet get very, very farmed. It almost feels also somewhat like it doesn't really oh, he matter. Got pinged out. He got pinged out. Oh, oh. So I'm jumping. Oh, and he's actually realizing that it's too late. He's still... Oh, the damage That's is That's going to hurt. <laughs> Wait, what? No, no, because it's maximum damage. It's maximum range. Oh. At some point, if you're if you're maximum range, it stops doing the da an extra damage. It didn't even hit, though. Why did it not hit? Because it's maximum range. Well, then it does the maximum damage it can. It didn't even hit. No, I don't think it's doing maximum damage. I think if you teleport, it just does the damage of a right click. Doesn't it? Oh, do you think he got so far away with all those jumps that it actually, like, I'm, I'm not even sure about this. I'm confused as well. But, um... It could be. You might be right. Maybe he jumped so far away that the the rules for the so spell... So speedy. Oh, this could be big. Dead Dazzle on that, the menu. Dead Dazzle on the menu. No grave available. Global Silence used as well. We also have got ourselves a, a dead Fada, because at the back, the rest of LFY, they came to try and avenge their Dazzle. Pilot Eye tries to run away from this one. He doesn't have any spells left available to help his team or to help his survival. Another chain, 
exchange Afu died on the other side of the fight. Very split out fight, which yeah. actually helps Cloud9 a lot because it could have been a lot worse for either team, I guess. Yeah, the boundless strike didn't hit anyone. I think he hit it in between two targets, else that could have been uh, a lot better for LFY. But yeah, two for two exchange. Pretty all right overall. The main thing is still just how farmed this Monkey King is getting. The 4k difference in net worth is the Monkey King. But Monkey he King is, is, a very, is a fairly squishy hero, right? And at the moment, he's just building damage. Well, yeah. he's building BKB next, but he only has he has damage. So the survivability for him, this other BKB than is being be evasive... Problem. They can't really kill him in BKB with their current heroes. PL needs a lot of build-up time to kill heroes through that. Lina is not farmed enough. Uh, the Enchantress Impetus is a is a chance, but the way Monkey King takes fights, he's going to pop this BKB and just start hitting heroes. And if his life steal procs, he's immortal. Yeah. Because then he can lose like 1500 health, press his first spell, the Boundless Strike, and just go back to full. So this this BKB is going to be a, a really big item. LFY again, just showing why why they're the best of the group so far. Like the the, the moves and the the decisions they're making. They're just really, really high class. The, especially the, that bottom to tower kill they got after diving Fata the way they did. Just reading the movements on the map very well. Just playing with really high confidence mid lane. Yeah. Afu's gonna go in. Yeah, this Sand King is uh, having a rough time. He gets the four staff up and he's silenced up. He's trying to get out. He's trying to run. In the meantime, the hook shot hit upon Fata. Fata also trying to escape. Oh, nice stun. The Sand King buddy is not able to make it out, but. Uh, at Wait. least Fada? No, he gets you. Sun misses. Super in the base. He denies himself. Wait, what broke the tree of Monet? He jumped on a tree and then he got stunned. Maybe his teammate? Yeah, yeah he could have been. I'm not sure what did it. I thought it was Fata's stun. That's why I was like, wow, what a nice stun. Did I... Afu boulder over it? It could be. Maybe that's what happened. Uh, the oh. rest of Cloud9, by the way, decided not to come. We've got a push, uh, pushing Phantom Lancer NV on top and uh, Byladai was pushing bottom. Oh, hello. Monet finds Envy. Let's see if that Battle Fury works. Oh. The ball and oh, it hits! It hits! Can he stop him from teleporting out? Does he do enough damage for more hit? Oh, that was so close! It deals so much damage this one. And that range is always such crazy. This is really fascinating for me to watch because I, I haven't seen a Monkey King like this before. I don't yeah. think anybody has. I, I don't think anybody wants to, but yeah. And there's a couple of players in high MMR pub games that also play core Monkey King, but I just haven't seen it with this effect and this this kind of uh, build and playstyle. And then you transfer that into a competitive environment and it's just a totally different story. Yeah. It's, just, it's just very nice to, to see. Well, surgically, uh, LFY is removing all towers from the map. They so got the towers mid. To go top. Yep. So we were saying early on, giving uh, giving Cloud9 props on their early movements and saying that they had a good shot at this game, and it was yes. nice to see that they had uh, solved some of their or learned from some of their mistakes. And you're done better. You're talking in past tense. Yeah. Because well, we'll wait and see bottom here. Oh yeah, the burst strike, death prophet, super. This oh, global well. silence, a defensive one again. Is it defensive and successful? Is a question. Jules is still there, so Fada cannot escape. Si Stunned up, and there, there's no way. And this time he cannot suicide. MSS will probably get out of this one alive, actually. Uh, they know where he is, so he used to flare to see him. He's got the force available. Oh, if Afu reads this one now. Maybe, probably. Wow. <laughs> I know. All right, All right. get out of here. So that's a, that's a defensive global silence that didn't even end up being It didn't successful. save anyone. Yeah. Uh. Meantime, top lane. There was still there was still some pushing happening. Monet uses BKB. He actually got fairly low there as well, but he still has the Aegis as well. Chasing that pilot die. Pilot turns around for a curse. Diving uh, ends here. As Monet props his ultimate so that Super can go for the tower. And Envy cannot chase, so this is uh, this is just Monet just sitting there. Helps against the Lucius as well. Yep. Cute little play. Looks like Cloud9 might chase this. Nah, they're not. Yeah, they're gonna disengage you. So what I was getting at before was that Cloud9 did very well in the early phases, and there again, it's it's like a similar pattern where. Uh, the movements of LFY are just better coordinated and they're successful. And Cloud9, they've had a couple of really nice counterplays and like trades early on, but overall yeah. the economy of the game, the efficiency of their movements is just not, it just doesn't compare. Like this Monkey King is so farmed because he's just being very effective with how he's moving around. He's farming at the right times, he's moving toward kills at the exact correct moments. And in comparison, we had moments previously where, the, for example, the PL and the Lina were in the mid lane together for almost a minute, and yeah. it just slows down their progression in the game a lot, where LFY are just way more efficient. Cloud9, this will be a good set of replays to watch to learn something about them, themselves and their, and their gameplay so far, where LFY just 
if if they can take something away from this set, that could be very helpful moving onward. So whether they win or lose this game, by the way, yeah. Even if they manage to come back into this game, it's looking really grim right now. Yes. And this is a position they could have avoided being in with with some better moves. So you remember when you said that LFY looked this good in a, in a previous LAN as well, and then at some point they just got figured out mm -hmm. and and basically owned. What is there to figure out about this team? Because it feels like it's not like they do this with with any hero. If they play like this with any hero, it doesn't really matter because they they just seem to know their exact limits for I everything they do. I think right now, if you're planning to counter this team, you don't look so much at the draft, but more at the play style. There's, yeah. it's got to be about how they how they uh, ward and move around in the map and set up these skirmishes where they are successful. And and have but the right numbers. But how do you numbers. deal with that? You look at their you look at their replays, you look at their plays, and then you try to either bait them and set up team fights that they think are good for them, and then it turn out to be baits, or uh, or you make moves yourself of that type. Global silence coming out. It is not saving anybody just yet. It's just actually it is it is making sure that LFI backs off. But it's another defensive global, and they didn't even catch in flame. Which what what they are trying to do? Aegis gets taken back, so at least. Clown doesn't have to worry about that anymore. It's a scary team to face, and it's a scary time for Cloud9 as well. They do ma they do try to continuously have those lanes pushed out so that oh, so that they oh, you know, and he's in trouble here. Yeah, he thought oh, he they missed time a little bit. Missed time the silence. Missed time again. Eh, it doesn't matter. There's still the bottom of the strike. Like strike array coming out. Envy going for the right click, doesn't matter though, Monet's Wicked Sick gets a kill on the Sand King as well, that's a double already, Fada having to run away, gets a stun up on Super, but the chase is on, Afu misses the boulder, AY gets the heal off, so he should be okay, depending on what Monet is planning right here, he's jumping forward, he's looking for the right time to go in and help his team, AY, oh those spirits, they just get him. I just kill him off. And Monet didn't actually uh, decide to jump down. He was waiting. Maybe maybe Pilot Eye came close enough. Maybe Fada came close enough. But He may have had cooldown on Primal Spring, actually. He was in the tree with his tree dance, and then he jumped from tree to tree instead All of right. jumping down. So, could be. Well, he wasn't needed for the kill on the Enchanters in the end, and Pilot Eye and Fada stayed far enough away to, uh, to be safe. Something that seems to be the case with this, this LFY team is yeah. uh, they. They play with extreme confidence in their moves. There's, there's like no second thoughts yeah. in what they're doing. Um, so you need to be as confident as them as when, when you go in and just commit for what you're doing. And Cloud9 seem to not be on the same page or completely sure what they're doing in, in a lot of the moves along that with this damage coming out. Yeah, this, uh, this is not going great for Cloud9. Can they force back LFI out of their base? They need to put everything in there if they want to have a shot, but they can't because the Sand King's already dead, and even if he was alive, there's no epicenter anymore because he already used it. He tried using it, Fada comes a bit in a bit too close, and there was a tree. There was a monkey. Oh my god, this Monkey it. King's hitting so damn hard. <laughs> he's, he's just able to dominate. This Monkey King is not dying. He's 10 0 6. GG's cool, LFY. I mean, 10 0 and 6 on the Monkey King in terms of kills. It is also 10. Wins. Four correct predictions. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Got him. But it's wow. 10 wins for LFI. They're still on top of the group, and it's. They're the only undefeated team. And you already mentioned that perhaps they haven't faced the top ones of their group just yet, but it's looking already as a very impressive record. They are so good. This team is so good. And when you play like this in the groups, um, this doesn't, like, the thing about this format is that this obviously doesn't secure you a very high placement in the tournament, mm. but I just think when you see how this team is playing and how flexible they are in picks, and it's just about, like, team cohesion and very good understanding of how to make moves and play together as a unit, yeah. those are the absolute hardest skills to have as a team, is this stuff. And when you master that, and you feel like you can pick anything, then you have a team like Wings at TI6. Uh, so I'm seeing a lot of Wings in this team, how it's playing right now, that does not mean that they will go on to win the whole thing or even place top three. But if they play like this and the other teams play as they have so far, this is one of the favorites for yes. sure. Like they are really damn good right now, LFY. So impressive, I can say. Looking, looking very, very sharp. And th this is a team I'm going to have to watch for the rest of this tournament. How they're going to do it. That is. Yeah. And and I mean, really Cloud Nine. Sure, they have not got a great record. They are now one and seven. Seven. Yeah. 
But I think losing against LFY, you know, there's no shame in that at this point. They no, this this is their smallest loss. Yes. The reason this game is important is that I think when you're playing against... It's the similar thing when you're playing scrims. When you're playing against, arguably in this group, at least right now, the best of the best, that's where you can learn the most. Because yeah. they punish you the hardest for your mistakes, and they make the best moves. And that makes the replay, it makes it very apparent what you're doing wrong if you look at the right things. Yeah. You're going to see exactly what it is you need to work on. So it's good footage for them to have a look at. Oh, and they got time to do that as this was their last game of the day. This was our last game of the day on this specific stream as well. There are still more games going on, though. You can check out uh, the main stream, which is Dota 2 TI, and uh, watch more Dota there from us, though. We'll see you tomorrow, and go watch more Dota. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.